Um, hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Nathan from Minneapolis Running and from the Oregon Brew Running Series. I'm kind of running, wearing two hats here today. Uh -huh. I'm with Sarah Bowen Shea from Another Mother Runner, and we will get into that here in a little bit once we make sure that um, we are live. Uh, we are in beautiful Portland, Oregon. It was just moments ago. It was pouring rain. It was cold and kind of gross out, but it, the sun is coming out, and in true Portland fashion, it will probably stay this way for a little bit. It'll and probably then, rain and again. And then go away. Yeah, uh -huh. so it'll probably rain again very, very soon. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but we are chatting here today. We're at Migration Brewing, which is a great little uh, microbrewery, craft brewery here in Portland, Oregon at Gleason and 28th. They make some amazing, amazing beers. This is called Stalling. Um, That's okay. And we are so, there we are. All right, we are good here. Um, we're so thankful to them for one, to be, uh, to let us use this space, but I am really excited, Sarah, to talk with you. Uh, fun little backstory. So Charlie from Twin Cities in Motion, mm -hmm. the folks that, good folks that organized the Medtronic Twin Cities Marathon reached out to me and said, hey, would you like to interview Sarah Bone Shea from another, another mother runner? And full disclosure, I had, I've heard of your website, but I, you know, I wasn't a follower. I'm not mm -hmm. a mother. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed that. Uh -huh. But yes, I, I, it's hopefully obvious mm -hmm. um but i i just i love what you guys are doing uh, since oh, then i've you. been listening to your podcast and following along i'm on your email list now oh, and look at you yeah it's i think what's what's fun is that it's um you know obviously you're catering to women and mothers but i was listening recently to a uh, um your podcast on strength training mm -hmm. and i was driving i was like i need to take notes for this <laughs> i need to like lay down on the floor and like do the glute test and like so right, it's, right. it's applicable to sure, sure. mothers and fathers and and people with fur babies. Yes, fur babies, yes. dogs and cats. And I know uh -huh. that's, you know, part of your uh, part of your base as well. So, uh -huh. um, but I'm excited to chat with you today. We're going to be talking about uh, the, the website. Um, and I don't even know if website's the right word. It's really a community of people. It is. You've hit the um, right word. Community. Yeah, it's, it's a community. It's a tribe. You've got mm -hmm. a website, um, which includes a blog. You've got a podcast, very active social media presence. I can mm -hmm. already see there's lots of people following so should I, so I also should mention that that if um, you guys have questions about mm -hmm. um for for sarah or i guess for me but you don't really want to hear me <laughs> um feel free to ask them here and uh we will do our best i will do and i'm my I'm best and i'm new at this so i've never i've yes. done we've done a couple of facebook lives but never one where i could actually see what ah, was going on okay. so i don't i don't yeah. know if I were could. you were you able to find um i well so i found our page let's see if i can find it I don't know. My goodness. Let's um, see here. Would it be under video? Uh, it should be. Let's see. Here, you want to look at my phone? If you, yeah. Actually, I think what you might need to do here. Excuse us one second. Mm -hmm. I promise we will. Mm -hmm. And please note, everyone, we are in a brewery, but we are drinking yes. water. It's a little early. We we thought it. Yeah, it might be. It's it's ten o'clock here on the west coast. We thought it might be a little bit uh, bad form. Here we go. Yeah. All right. So if you just share, that's our page if you just hit the share button and you can share it either to your personal page or the another mother runner page yeah um oh and my, our uh we so have uh, a lot of mother runner yes. um, fans in the twin cities and uh, i want to give a shout out to joe who is watching with oh you oh yes hello joe yes yeah when i posted on minneapolis during there's a lot of folks that said um that they were excited excited to uh to chat with you and ask you anything um so this will be this will be fun you may need to, uh, to turn, turn that down a little bit, down. yeah, because uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> otherwise we're in like the space balls moment of the future and the past <laughs> and kind of that weird space time continuum thing that doesn't quite uh, doesn't quite make sense. So, um, all right. So, Sarah, you are a writer. You're an author, mm -hmm. three time published author. Mm -hmm. um, do you have more four than that? times four in time. case you count the essential breastfeeding log? I sure. Yeah, you, maybe I will, you missed that. I, I, I think I missed that. It might be on my short list of books to read. I'm not sure. <laughs> Um, we were just talking about we have two small twins at home, and so breastfeeding is a huge part of, I'm not doing it, but it's a big part of my life right sure. now. Sure, yeah. Um, uh, but you are a journalist by trade, correct? Is that I your am, I am. That was, my, that was the hat I wore for many years. Okay. I used to work in magazines, uh, also regional publication. Um, 
I worked for a magazine called City Sports, which covered participatory sports, sports okay. in uh, California because I lived in San Francisco. Okay. What are participatory sports? Versus spectator sports. Ah, okay. Yeah, learn okay. a new phrase. Yeah, yeah that's good. Uh, you write, so, write that down. Right, take more notes. Take more <laughs> notes, Nathan. Uh, so. Yeah, so learning and breastfeeding and <laughs> participatory sports. Yeah, and, and glute tests and everything. Yeah, yes, exactly. So, <laughs> so, you know, so skiing, running, cycling at the time, inline skating, okay. uh, tennis, hiking things like that Very so cool. so the, yeah so that's where i fell into writing about sports and fitness and gear gotcha it's a big gear head for a long time okay. so uh, i worked at a magazine called walking which is no longer in business walking okay. walking uh, it's uh like runner's row but for walkers okay a little bit Makes slower yeah. Uh-huh. yeah yeah and i was the athletic footwear editor for shape magazine for okay. probably close to two decades wow okay. yeah so um i got to know actually a lot of women in portland because of that because i needed a lot of shoe testers Oh, so course. when I go to a lot of races, people are like, Sarah, <laughs> and I'll be like, oh my gosh, Monica, I haven't seen you in years. Uh, since you here's up. some shoes. Right, how, do they, right, how do they fit? I still get yeah. sometimes like, oh, I love that pair you gave me. I still have them. I'm like, yeah. okay, you need to retire those. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, here, have these new ones. Do you have a favorite shoe or are you kind of a multi-brand Oh, I'm, I'm trying to expand my repertoire, okay. but I, um, was, I'm a longtime Saucony runner. Um, I'm excited. I'm going to try a Hoka. Uh, no, I no. am a, a guide girl. Ah, okay. I have a slight overpronation. Ah, and yes. um, but I'm going to try the Hoka One Ones. I'm excited to try ah, those. Yes, those are very popular. Yeah. Yes, particularly among masters runners, mm-hmm. as um, might shock you, but I fall into what? that category. You yeah, can't, I, you're not I, a masters. What? I know. I know. Okay. So just, re- just recently, <laughs> right, I'm, right. I'm sure. <laughs> right. So, uh, so yes. Yeah, so I'm excited to try those. I was just at okay. the Eugene Marathon for um, great race. Yeah, the Expo, and gosh, I was shocked. By the number of people wearing Hoka One Ones. Yeah, it's um, a couple, a couple of my, couple of my buddies who are not masters runners uh-huh. are love the Hoka One Ones and uh-huh. they just they swear by them. So yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, don't think of a master shoes. Just think of them as okay. the, the cool trail runner. Okay. Um, All you right, might yeah. have to grow a big beard or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I'm working on it. I don't know. I'm how working that on it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's Portland. I can carry it off. Exactly. Yeah. Any, anything goes <laughs> right. in, in Portland. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're also a 13 time marathoner. I am. And a mother yourself, a mother of three. And I, I should am. say, since we're recording this right after Mother's Day, happy Mother's Day. Oh, thank you very much. Did thank you, you do anything? Did your family do anything fun for you? Or no. 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 Let you go on a nice oh. long run? Uh, I went on a run um, and said, my running partner and I said, happy Mother's Day to every woman we saw saw with a stroller or okay. a small child lovely and um no my family couldn't even be bothered to actually hand me the oh. cards that they gave me they just Ouch. left them lying around so <laughs> i actually haven't opened two of them i'm being very okay. passive aggressive ah uh, okay yeah. okay Which, maybe uh, it's some sign of like why isn't mom opening this stuff maybe it's no like and out, outsmarting each other no and daphne my uh, girl twin she just kind of tossed it on the table and ran out of the room mm. so but it was it was i she wrote she did she's really into art and so really beautiful art and wonderful message so um okay. so i've i put it up in my closet gotcha. to be able to look at it yeah um so. and i made dinner though so nothing oh, special oh you made dinner okay mm-hmm. well mm-hmm. yeah that's you know <laughs> at least maybe you made something that you like i like exactly yeah, that's okay. the key because my son <laughs> wanted to cook and i'm like no i'm really keen on having something tasty tonight so uh, <laughs> that's that's, yeah. that's your prerogative yeah i'm a little distracted because we're getting a bunch of comments here oh my goodness, uh, mostly huh? just saying hello and uh-huh. Uh, no, Lisa, this is not Dangerous Man Yes. Brewing. We are in Portland, Oregon. Um, oh, and Petra. I'm run- Petra lives in um, Great Britain, and she is coming oh, to wow. Portland, though. Okay. And so I'm going to get to run with her next week. I'm very excited. So hi, Petra. Like the middle of the night there? Um. <laughs> very late. I'm not sure what time is there. Yeah. Well, Sarah, I'm wondering if you can take me back. Okay. And I know that you have a history in rowing. Correct. Oh, you, oh, you as really as a, as did a, a deep rower. dive, I, Nathan. I am really you know, impressed. I, I, you know, I'm trying to NPR this thing and really, <laughs> you know, do my research here. Um, but I'm wondering if you can tell me uh, how you became a runner. Okay, so, and for the record, Dimity's also my the right, co-founder, yes, my business yes, partner. Thank you, Dimity McDowell, yeah. Yes, uh, very good. Uh, so we were both rowers, and that's actually how we connected. We were both rowers at Colgate University, which okay. was in upstate New York central new york and so i'm a little older than she is and uh so we met at a colgate rowing that in uh (laughs) not too often (laughs) the uh um we were i was at a colgate rowing um reunion event 
and mm. Dimity was still, she was a senior, and she stood up and read a poem that she had written, oh, okay. uh, kind of an ode to, to Colgate Rowing. So um, so she stood out in my mind, partly because of the poem, partly because she's uh, a little over six foot right. three. I was just going to say, so she's pretty tall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm the yeah. short one at 5'11". Okay. I'm okay with that. Um, <laughs> well, we, all, we all have our burdens to bear. <laughs> right. So, so, uh, so but b- to your question, um, so I was not an athlete before I got to college. Okay. I did a little running, but really not much. And then went to Colgate, which is in, um, there's not a whole lot going on around there. Mm. And so I took up rowing as something to do. And j- and my dad had been a rower um, in college. And so mm. sort of had it in the genes. And so I just fell in love with it. And uh, you run for cross training for rowing. Sure. So, and um, Colgate's, it, when it's not snowy or incredibly overcast, it makes huh. Portland look like a sunny yeah. climate. <laughs> um, oh, interesting. <laughs> the, yeah. uh, uh, it's a lovely place to run. Okay. So, um, so yeah. So, and also because I wanted, I was very, it was a club sport at the time. I was very intent on making the first boat. Okay. And so I then, uh, during the summer, between freshman and sophomore year, I would go running to improve my fitness. And there's this one hill, real beast mm. of a hill. My parents live in Connecticut, very hilly around there. And I would tell myself that if I could run fast all the way up it, that I would make the first boat. And I did make the first boat. Wow, awesome. So, yeah. Congratulations. Oh, thanks. And yeah. I can't run up that hill now without <laughs> thinking about that. <laughs> yeah, there's some things like that where, like uh, different parts in uh, Portland or the Twin Cities where I will, I'll run a route and, you know, I've, I had some epiphany on that route or some, oh, and sure. every, I was always reminded of what I was thinking about, you know, years before oh, exactly. that, one, that one spot. So. Oh, definitely. I definitely feel that way. Yeah, there were these hills. I, when I uh, graduated college, I lived in San Francisco oh. and I lived in a very, very hilly part of San Francisco, okay. which is saying quite a bit. Yeah, and I was going to say other flat <laughs> parts of San Francisco. Right, right, the marina. <laughs> and so, um, Oakland, so right, so I, I lived on Potrero Hill. Okay. And so I would um, run back and forth on the streets. And it was just, I mean, the wow. hills were so steep that the cars parked perpendicular to the right. curb. Um, and yeah. a friend of mine, when we uh, went into a video store, this is how long ago it was, and we parked the car perpendicular. And she goes, well, isn't the car going to roll over while we're in there? And I'm like, no, the car's <laughs> not going to roll over no, while we're in will, there. The car will be fine. <laughs> so, so yeah, so those are other hills that bring back okay. a lot of memories. Yeah. Funny. Yeah. So then was there a moment where you – so you did it initially just to – a lot of people do – do running they take up <laughs> running for something else you uh-huh, know sure um was there a moment where you sort of transitioned and said i'm no longer a rower now i'm a runner or are you still a rower and a runner no that's inter- that's intriguing that you asked that um i it took me a long time to admit that i was a runner first and a rower second right and even though so i didn't um i mean i'm well i took up other things after i graduated college um i had a you know, I was in editorial, so I had a very low paying job. Sure. And uh, as you can relate to. Um, and so, I mean, I taught myself how to swim at like age 23 or something. Wow. Um, and and I, I should rectify. I knew how to swim, sort of, but mm. I wouldn't put my face in the water. So I taught myself how to alternate okay. breathe. Did you know how to swim or did you know not how not to drown before? Um, I knew enough. You know, I mean, I could do the crawl stroke somewhat. Okay. But I, um, but I swam with my face out of water and I turned my head every single stroke. Mm, okay. So, um, so, but I wasn't even rowing then, but then I've taken up rowing twice as a master's athlete and okay. for rowing for the record, you only have to be over 27 to be a master's athlete. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, it's a yeah. young, a young person's yeah, sport. <laughs> yes. So, um, so, but when I was, I guess I trained for the marathon that I PR'd in, in 2009 and I was rowing then and running. And that's when I finally, though, realized, like, huh, I think running comes first Mm. on my resume and rowing second. Okay. And now I haven't rowed with any regularity since 2009, so I'm definitely... Ah, So I think... So to answer your question, long answer, (laughs) uh, eight eight years. Okay, eight years. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever been down to the Willamette and done... The dragon boat that's not rowing i guess that's not but rowing but that's paddling but that's okay yeah it's, I ha- it's a water in a boat right, <laughs> right? <laughs> you have an oar in your hand a paddle yeah. uh, i did i did it once okay and you know with with dragon boating which for people who don't know is a huge sport out mm-hmm. here and in a lot of parts of uh, different pockets of the u.s but it largely it's a japanese sport right? right right and um very heavy big boats that you don't take in and out of the water mm-hmm. and you don't have a moving seat and you face forward. Oh, that's, that's a big distinction. Okay. Right. Um, rowing, you don't know where you're rowing, going. You're going backwards and yeah. your seat moves. So it's a full body exercise. Yes. So I found dragon boating disconcerting because it was only the upper body. And you mm. sort of couldn't, even though you're facing forward, you couldn't really see where you were going because right. it's a lot of bending at the waist. Mm. Okay. So, um, yeah, it wasn't for me. Interesting. But okay. um, I do could. You, tr- do you row out 
somewhere else out here? Like, is there a... I have done... I mean, um, so there's rowing... There's Masters rowing down on the Willamette. Oh, there is. For okay. sure. And at Lake Oswego and um, hmm. further up the Willamette. That's right. Um, up the closer to the Columbia. But um, it just... Gosh, it was really early. Oh, <laughs> I mean, you have to be down there by 5 a.m. <laughs> no. and, and running it. What, what time do you go running, though? 6 a.m. Oh. That's a big much, difference. It's a huge difference. To get up before 5 a.m. blows mm -hmm. your whole day. As it, it kind of your whole week and some sometimes <laughs> as a father of 11 month old yes, twins yeah, you can attest well, to that absolutely so um <laughs> so yes so and to be quite honest it wasn't you spend a lot of time doing it but mm. to me it wasn't as an efficient uh, and concise of a workout as running is right. you know i head out my door to go running and an hour later i've been running for the entire hour and you're back home yeah, yeah and you're back home whereas with rowing i had to you know i would ride my bike there and then you got to mm -hmm. dither around with the getting the boat down there and setting your feet and everything and yeah. you're gone for like two and a half hours and you right. basically exercise for about 55 minutes <laughs> it's not very um, efficient yeah. yeah no so i i need a more um a, yeah so right. but i have more thought about concise. i've thought about yeah. going back to it i got to um went down to san francisco where i lived off and on for eight years and i rode uh there and so i got to go out with my old rowing team there which was well, a fun. thrill yeah. it was just i i literally while it was happening i thought this is not a dream this is actually happening it was so wonderful that's and fun so um so it got me thinking a little bit about it sure maybe so, dip yeah. in your the yeah. proverbial toe back <laughs> into the rowing <laughs> right, world right possibly. right, right. <laughs> um but i have to i love open water swimming now and i have oh. i have gone swimming in the willamette oh really okay yes. notice how i circumvented using the past tense of yes. swim uh -huh. swam, yeah. Swam, yeah. yeah swimming so i i <laughs> went swimming once in the willamette okay. last summer and i um that's, so i love that's that fun. yeah so. we were um i run with portland running company as my running uh -huh. team and in the summer um, you know that little dock that's just uh, what was that on the just just past the Hawthorne South Bridge. South of the Hawthorne. That's yes, where right that's there. where my rowing club went out. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. yeah. So Thursday nights, go down there at the end of the run, jump in, come out. Mm -hmm. um, it's very refreshing. <laughs> it's lovely. It's lovely. Um, <laughs> yeah. So you've done 13 marathons now. So uh -huh. when you you decided you're a runner, not a rower, or uh -huh. both. Uh -huh. When did you decide to become or do your first marathon? Was that pretty early in that journey, or had you, were you smart and did a 5K, 10K, half marathon, couple half marathons, and then no, a marathon? Because no, no, no. that's definitely your? the progression that another mother runner and train like a mother club uh, prescribed to. Right. Yeah. So, um, or as ascribed to. Right. Um, so I was not much of a racer um, okay. when I. So when I lived in San Francisco. I mean, I think the U.S. is most beautiful city. Um, I for some reason didn't race i just loved running hmm. in different places there and maybe i was a cheapskate i think let's let's call let's call sure. it what it was sure. i was a cheapskate it's expensive. so so i didn't need I, at the time i didn't need any added impetus like hmm. i would just want to go outside and run because i was in san francisco right and i was young and um so then i didn't do my first marathon until i was um actually living temporarily with the man who's now my husband in okay. chicago and jack. i a jack look at that oh Not my john? gosh uh, no he is a, he's a jack john that's right that's yeah what he's it is. a john okay. jack yeah john jack okay. versus my son who is a john yeah right versus okay. my first husband who's also a john right exactly yeah, yeah. Oh, well yeah. so just parenthetically i was um you know during my research and i found that that article in runner's world where you did that whole thing uh -huh. and i vaguely remember reading that oh. years ago when it first came out because the the <laughs> the jock thing uh -huh. oh. are you a john was is it are you a jack or a john or jock oh. or something isn't that like one of those sidebar in it, that article well it definitely is that uh, yeah, like okay. whether it was confusing enough that yes. i was yes so anyway mm -hmm. i was like i remember reading this so <laughs> you're like who knows yeah. 10 years later yeah, or whatever right. it's been now we can act. <laughs> here we are <laughs> sorry go on i interrupted you <laughs> no 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 so um no, I totally lost my train of thought. Oh, so, so okay, sorry. okay. So no, I went to live temporarily yes. in Chicago okay. with um, Jack John, with right. John Jack, John <laughs> and, uh, Hus husband. Let's just call him husband. Yeah. <laughs> and so I um, missed San Francisco, and so I okay. thought, oh, if I trained for the San Francisco Marathon, that would be an excuse for going ah, back to San Francisco. You have to go back, then. Right, right, right. So and I still, I kept my, I owned my place in San Francisco, so. Okay. And had somebody subletting or whatever, and so um, so what, trained in Chicago for right. the San Francisco Marathon. Not the best, <laughs> not the best strategy. Um, yeah, yeah. So did that, and also I sort of wanted to. Um, I was away from my friends. I was, sure. um, oh, you know, in the throes of love. And ah. um, gosh, I got really skinny when I trained for that. And I, and I think it's not. It was definitely not the marathon training. It was being in love. Ah, and uh, you're fall sorry, falling in love. Because of course, I'm love. still okay. madly in love. Of course. <laughs> how many? How long have you guys been married? 
Um, too long? No. Uh, yeah. I didn't. S- <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> uh, it'll be uh, 17 years this summer. Oh, okay. So. Um, Congratulations. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and so, uh, so anyway, so it was nice to have um, something that I had to do. Sure. Um, and to explore Chicago. I mean, Chicago is such a fabulous place it's for amazing, running. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, um, so that was fun and swore I would never do another marathon after oh, that don't one. Don't we all? Oh, oh my goodness. I um, yeah. had, had had this friend who we had, um, had taken, her name's Bevan. Bevan and I had both t- uh, been trying to get pregnant at the same time. Uh, and um gosh this is oversharing and um isn't that what you guys are all about <laughs> right, the it t- is. it's tmi tuesday yeah. it is tuesday so, yeah so, so t- i will um, not be tmi tuesdaying <laughs> uh, but anyway go on so so bevan and i were um uh both trying to get pregnant um with our respective partners sure. and um <laughs> that's good <laughs> yeah, you clarify that yeah, right so so right. then <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be kind of yeah, all over right. here. Yeah, this Devin, is good. Devin, John, Jack. Yes, yeah. okay. Do we need a flow chart? Need a, like, yeah. Let's go. And, uh, and post it notes. So, so anyway, so she got pregnant a couple weeks ahead of me. And okay. so then she also, though, uh, that was the backstory of that. And she also ran her first marathon uh, about okay. a month before I did. And so I called Bevins because, you know, we'd been through the trials and tribulations of being pregnant, having, sure. you know, yeah. giving birth, you know, newborns, the whole bit. And so uh, she taught me how to sleep train my older daughter. And so um, so I called her, you know, the afternoon after she'd done the marathon. And I was like, oh, so tell me, be honest, be honest. You know, don't leave any details out. <laughs> and oh, so no. so she made it sound not so bad, knowing okay. that I was just about, you know, a month out of mind. Sure. And boy, the afternoon after I ran my marathon, I called her. I was like, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> Liar. <laughs> I'm in agony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have a very, and this isn't original, but I think you have to completely forget your previous marathon experience before doing another one. Right. Was, like, your brain could not handle it if you if you oh. remembered, right? Oh, I know. I got to say, yeah. though, I love love training for a marathon, mm. but um, there marathons that I have loved doing are few and far between out of the 13. Sure. Yeah. That's, so I probably, probably agree with you there. Yeah. So let's, while we're on the topic of marathon training, you are... Um, Twin, running the Twin Cities Marathon. I am. Which I is am. A, a race that is near and dear to my heart. It is, um, I, I think, it. so I've done seven marathons. I've okay. done that one four times. And I believe it holds my PR mm. and my whatever the opposite of a PR is. <laughs> the worst and the best. <laughs> okay, so right okay. there in that race. <laughs> um, but the reason we're talking about that, obviously, because Minneapolis running, the connection, but it is one of your uh, key, what do you, you call it? The target tra- target, target ra- races, races in the, the Train Like a Mother Train Club. Train Like a Mother Club. Um, so what I want to do is to kind of start, sort of transition to this section. Mm-hmm. Um, what is, what is another mother runner like? Oh, okay. Philosophically, just kind of big picture. You know, we talked about the website, the podcast, all that stuff. But what is it from a very high level philosophical standpoint? Um, is it just moms who run? It seems like it's a lot more than that. It is a community that supports, encourages, inspires, motivates, and gives a gentle uh, push out the door. Okay. to women runners. I mean, we have a few um, token males, such as now okay. yourself. Sure, yeah. I'm, a, yeah. I'm a yeah. another mother-father yeah. runner. Right, yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, I mean, at our very core, we are a community, yeah. and that's um, what we started out as doing, and Dimity is also a journalist by trade, and we didn't hmm. set out to build a brand or a business, and it just grew up around our first book, Run Like a Mother, which came out in 2010, and we just realized that there was this amazing community of women runners that really at that point hadn't been mm-hmm. solidified, if a community p- can be solidified. Um, and so that we and our publisher said, hey, you know, you got to if you put out a book, you got to launch a Facebook page and right. be on Twitter. And, and we're like, oh, Twitter. Oh. And so. <laughs> so. Uh, so, yeah. So we just spoke to them in a very authentic, mm-hmm. um, candid um, we like to think witty, uh, insightful voice. I think so. Yeah. Uh, thanks. And yeah. uh, um, so, and it just grew from there. And I mean, pretty much everything we do is about um, growing and um, building that community sure. and supporting that community. So you never intended to do that when we you did. when you had the book or the the article, like stuff in Runner's World, and the books came out and all that is sort of just happened well right? you know it's sort of interesting the same way that i was um a runner but didn't really realize that right. i was a runner not a rower and it's the same way that there was one day about maybe a year and a half into doing another mother runner that i'm like hey you know another run the runner is my full-time job and freelancing is my side yeah. gig and it was that was a big epiphany for me and so now i mean yeah. now the freelance is out the window sure. and another mother runner is my more than full-time job 
and, and which I love. Yeah. And um, so it was kind of that reflection and figuring out what it is I am and what the what the business is. And, sure. Um, yeah, and I mean, we just keep adding um, other roads, to other branches of the Another Mother Runner tribe. So like the Train Like a Mother Club, yeah. which we launched. Um, we had um, precursors to the programs um in 2014 2015 but it was last year that we launched its own site train like a mother dot club and um really um you know organize it put it all in one place and now it's just exploding yeah. it's our um biggest if if amr is a tree then it's the biggest branch on the tree oh wow mm-hmm. yeah That's awesome. so yeah we have for that we have everything from a 5k all the way up to ultra marathons we have mental toughness training programs we mm. have uh, simply nourished like a mother. We have uh, three distances of triathlon training programs. Wow. Yeah. And are you are you writing plans? Do you have a, like we have a couple coaches, coaches that are working yeah. with that? And, okay. and Dimity, which Train Like a Mother Club is her baby, and um, mm. she is a RRCA. Is that it? Yes. Runners yeah. Club of America. Yes, yeah. certified coach. But um, she oversees okay. the, the coaches. And we have, I mean, gosh, our ultra coach. I have to brag on her for a minute. Is um, I might mess up her name. Stephanie Violet Howe. And okay. she won, I want to say Western States. She's an ultra marathoner oh. in Bend. What's yeah. her name? You Stephanie? Need Stephanie. If you, Stephanie Violet, like the flower. How? How. Mm-hmm. Let's see. So um, look at you yeah, on Facebook lucky, Live lucky and challenge. Google it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm everywhere. I got twins. I yeah. got <laughs> you got crazy. two hands. Use them both, exactly. son. Exactly. <laughs> I'm getting really good at feeding, <laughs> feeding them both uh, at the same time. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. Okay. There she is. Very cool. Yeah. Nutrition, luck of the Irish. Huh? I don't know what that means. It's a the blog, <laughs> latest blog post. <laughs> anyway, that's going to be too distracting. So, uh, so yeah, so um, um, the Train Like a Mother Club. So we have these target races throughout the year. Right. And because so much of another mother runner is online, mm-hmm. and but there are pockets of being able to connect with um, people in real life, whether it's when I, you know, go to Ogden Marathon this weekend hmm. or when I was, you know, in Eugene two weeks ago or whatever, right. but also... Um, that we have done Ragnar races together. We put together Ragnar teams, or we have our annual retreat once a year. But also, um, so then we have these target races for the Train Like a Mother Club. So instead of Train Like a Mother Club, let's say you were going to do, let's say your, your wife, let's sure. say, was going to do. Could I, could I do it if <laughs> yeah, I wanted to? You could. Like, okay. We could. We do have okay. actually a Train Like a Father Facebook page because when you're in the Train Like a Mother Club, you get private Facebook page. Uh, okay. And um, yeah, it's not as active though as the um, of other pages. Not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so um, look at it. It's getting really sunny out. I know, like, there's I hardly <laughs> any clouds in the sky. This is not even the same place we were 40 <laughs> minutes ago. Right. Um, so, Crazy. so, um, so let's say you were going to do um, a, a different race. Let's say you were going to do. Um, wine glass or something okay so you you'd figure out that let's say that is um let's say that's also october 1st okay and so you would join Which is in the twin cities marathon right. is. it is so you would but but you don't have the money to travel twin cities so you live outside of albany and you're gonna go to the race in corning so you would join you'd pay to join train like a mother club and then you would um know which wave you were going to be in and so that would that would be when your training would start. Gotcha. So I believe training for that starts for the marathon. It would start uh, Memorial Day on Memorial Day. Okay. And so then you would go to the to Wine Glass, and maybe you would have connected with a couple other people in the Facebook page, and maybe you'd be able to like, oh, hey Jill, hey Julie, let's you know sure, make meet up at the you know expo or whatever. But if you were doing Twin Cities, we have. You know, that's a target race. So meaning there's a lot right. more emphasis on that. We're really trying to get a mm. critical mass of women runners who are doing that. So at Twin From Cities. all over the country, not just the Twin Cities. Exactly. Not so if Minnesota. You're, yeah, yeah, if you're doing Twin Cities Marathon and you live in, you know. Portland, Oregon. Yeah, Portland, Oregon. <laughs> And say, for instance, just a random oh, example. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, no, that's unrealistic. Yeah. Um, so, who would do so, that? So, yeah. So, we're going to have so at Twin Cities, and at, and when we have other sh- um, target races, we do we have a shakeout run the, the morning okay. before, and the um, then we have a party in the afternoon because oh, we don't want to have because we don't want to fringe on people's dinners, their right. car bloating, their ability that's to go very, sleep. That's a pers- precisionly tuned uh, right. precisionly <laughs> finely tuned right. part of the marathon experience yes, yes yes and the fact that we like to go to bed early so yes. so the um typically the party is kind of from like 2 to 4 30 we have our coaches oh, okay. there we have swag bags from our partners awesome um so you know you get noon goo belega socks um a bunch of really true goodies in your bag That's great 
And then, um, and then, gosh, do we have any other special? And then, oh, oftentimes Dimity's out there on the course. And okay. oh, we, oh, there's sign making Cheering at the party. Ah, okay. Uh, and so, do people make their own signs that they want others to hold for them? Or you know, that's an interesting question. I've actually yeah. never been to a sign making party oh, for okay. another Mother Runner. Um, okay, well, <laughs> so you gotta, I, you're slacking you know, here, here, Sarah. You, they're here. Yeah, right. Nathan, make this sign for me. <laughs> yeah. uh, hold it at mile say, 12. I no, 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 I like blue better. <laughs> yeah. Blue. Just don't say worst parade ever, <laughs> right. and that's a good sign. <laughs> Have you peed Funny. your capris yet? Yeah. Um. <laughs> so why did you choose Twin Cities? Uh, the Twin Cities Marathon. Why? What because was it about it that? It does uh, rock. <laughs> <laughs> because, um, so I'd like to point out that, that so it'll be marathon number 14 for me. Yes, and it is the amazing. only uh, marathon that I will have repeated other than Boston. And is that a... And I'll get back to your other question later. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Is, I'm just, I'm curious if that's like, a, you know, you're, you don't want to repeat marathons yes. because you want to experience them all. I do. There, well, or as, um, as many. Yeah, because there's because I like diversity, sure. and I which sounds like gosh, that I sound like a human resources <laughs> person, don't I? Um, so uh, I uh, manual <laughs> page right, seventy four right. section B. Yeah. <laughs> so so no, I like um, I uh, it's just I one well, of my mottos in life is um I like a different taste in every bite. So, um, so you're the kind of person that goes to a restaurant and never orders the same thing. Oh. Maybe you wouldn't even go to the same restaurant <laughs> twice then. <laughs> so I've only been to migration <laughs> yeah, once. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, but uh, I, well, I like it. There's, you know, there's only so many marathons in these legs, I think. Okay. And fair so enough. there's a lot of ones that I want to do from in terms of an enjoyment or wanting to see a, a certain place. Sure. Or, um, and so, um, and also, I don't know, it's an odd bragging right I like to have. Hmm. Um, and so Twin Cities, though, so beautiful. Well, so it is the be most beautiful urban marathon urban, most beautiful urban in America. America. Yeah, it sure so. is. It sure is. What a great tagline there, Nathan. I think it's already copyrighted. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, oh, I maybe have to pay them since I just said that. <laughs> right, exactly. Cha-ching. Yeah. So I, um, and also, so I, I'm bringing my running partner, Molly, with me. Okay. And so I want her to experience the beauty. And, I mean, the reason I originally ran Twin Cities was I had... Um, and I think I've told you this story before, but I'll, I'll um, it's okay. tell they, they, there's, there's these other good people, people listening. have not heard it. <laughs> yeah, so, or they might have on the podcast. Yeah. But That's okay. so that um, I was deprived of ever visiting the Twin Cities until mm. I was um, a Master's Age runner. Okay. And, uh, so so it's <laughs> last week you were there. Right, Go right. on. So, mm. I, uh, um, so I went there and just fell in love with the place. Just fell in love, and it was like must not have uh, been January that you were there. <laughs> it was it was uh, the spring. Okay, and um, it's kind of like the way I felt after I read Lolita for the first time as oh. an adult, and I just felt no, and I, I felt like why had no one ever told me what a fabulous mm -hmm. novel this is? Sure, you know Lolita, Twin Cities. You know you you say it's, them oftentimes it's, it's in the same be breath. The same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so. Cut from the same cloth. <laughs> right. So so I um but I did I felt like wh why did no one like take me by the shoulders and say you must visit the Twin Cities? It's such an <laughs> awesome place. And so it really is. So and I mean, we didn't even have great weather when we were there. We were there for a yeah. race expo, and it was chilly. And you know, I remember it being kind of rainy at one mm -hmm. point. But I just thought it was paradise. I mean, I love architecture. So beautiful, and yeah. I love historic homes. Mm -hmm. So I just already was, and the natural beauty with the Mississippi River running through it. And I mean, my gosh, what's the Mississippi doing all the way up there in yeah, Minnesota? Exactly. It's, it's, How it's is little, it great? It's, it's small up there, but yeah. <laughs> it's smaller. Yeah. And uh, my dad's from the south, so the, the Mississippi oh, River okay. figures largely in my life. Sure. Um, the first time we ever drove across it was during a drought, as my father would say. A drought. A drought. Okay. And um, and I'm like, that's it. And he's like, oh, it's it's because we haven't had rain months yeah. and um so anyway so i'm so my the friend joe the one i mentioned early on mm -hmm. is driving me up summit and i'm like this yeah. is summit avenue and i'm like this is just gorgeous this is am i i'm getting whiplash from turning my head <laughs> to look at all the beautiful historic homes it's pretty amazing and yeah. she said well if you run the twin seas marathon you get to run up this and i'm yeah. like oh, that's brilliant i'm coming back <laughs> And so, because the Hilarious. other the other way that I have schemed to get to go back to the Twin Cities with some regularity, other than running twenty six point two, yeah. is to send one of my kids to school to college. Oh, there you go. Because they have great colleges in the they greater have Twin Cities some area. Some of the best. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I used to work at one for over a decade. So nice. Uh, okay. I can, I can give you some recommendations. Uh, uh, yeah. We yeah. have another another live chat where we <laughs> just talk about kids college. Right. But. Right. <laughs> so so I thought um, you know so it's a, it's an excuse to go back mm -hmm. and. Um, and just, I mean, the the support. I mean, the, the, yeah. there's, I mean, a lot of marathons don't have great crowd support. Right. You or know. they do in little pockets. Oh, exactly. It's I just, mean, you know. you know, here in Portland, it's like, oh, okay, Willamette Boulevard. Oh, there's a whole bunch of people there. But for right. the 
previous 20 miles, it was, you know, <laughs> an empty bowling alley. Yeah. So, yeah. so, um, so anyway, just the sincere crowd support. I mean, people having parties in their front yard oh, and yeah. cheering and knowing what to say. And you don't even need to tell them what to write on their signs because mm-hmm. they know already. Well-educated yeah. spectators. Exactly. Exactly. And I mean, last year I was there, we, um, sell at the marathon expo. Oh, okay. And, um, so, and I was not signed up to run. And so I went running by myself and it was very pretty but i'm like oh i want to go on the real pretty parts yeah. i want to go on the course <laughs> where did you run when um, you were there? i ran out to some um nature preserve i ran along the river okay. um and in st paul i was in st paul okay. i was staying okay. at the um i was pretty near the convention center near the riverfront center oh, okay it's probably um, down like fort snelling ish area maybe or something i mean it was definitely it, the trail went in yeah, and there were a couple little was. little um I was about to say there were lakes near there, but that sounds stupid. Huh. They were very small and, and almost, they were barely above a swamp. Okay. I don't know if that gives you... There's I rem- a lot of those. I remember what podcast I was listening to. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, there you um, go. But I don't, I don't exactly know where I was. So, okay. but I was that's, so, a, that's okay. I was so disappointed that I wasn't able to experience the course, but I there was mm. no way I could finagle it sure. and get back in time to check out on time and everything. So I'm like, okay, that's it. I'm doing it again. Yeah. Yeah. So very cool. I'm going to repeat. Well, yeah. it is a fantastic, like I said, I've, it's it's easily one of my favorite, um, well, I've, I've done that one four times, then three mm-hmm. other ones, so it's, you know, I don't have a lot to draw uh-huh. from, but uh-huh. it is it is amazing <laughs> and beautiful. And I think when you live there, you take it for granted, oh. um, just because it, it is so beautiful. I mean, the, the lakes, Lake Calhoun and, and mm-hmm. Lake of the Isles and Lake Harriet, that's, you know, for me, it was just a regular oh, run. You know, part of my run. And so then when you're doing a race on that part, there's a, there's a certain... Um, familiarity to it that I think you perhaps take for granted a little bit Mm, but mm -hmm. you know being away for a while and like I have and going back I ran it in 2014 the year after we had moved I specifically went back to run that Mm -hmm. um, which is where I PR'd and um, BQ'd there Um, and it's just it's just amazing like it was funny you're talking about summit because (laughs) that's the worst part of the course oh yeah yeah it's it's up that hill you're coming to the finish it's you know mile 20 something to the end um, but if you're not super focused on your race, it you know you can sit back and, and enjoy it a little bit. But it's also it's a gradual climb. I it mean, is. I don't even think of it, it as is. a hill yeah. so much as a gradual climb. I've been trying to find hills around here that kind of replicate it, hmm. and I sort of feel that that Cooch, which is um, the street a couple yeah. over, Co- Cooch up into um, which I'm not mispronouncing that, you know, <laughs> folks. It looks it like couch, cooch, but it's Cooch. Yeah. Um, from basically the Whole Foods up into Laurelhurst. I know that's a five oh. percent grade because I was I one time okay. did a workout repeatedly up it where I was supposed to be doing it up a two percent grade and oops. <laughs> um, little little so too, yeah. yeah. Yeah, or coming up from um uh from the Columbia River into northeast. So it's a oh, gradual yeah. climb okay. to get from the Columbia up into sure. like Alameda Ridge. Sure. For all the locals who want to yeah. know these things. Yes, yeah. so taking yeah. notes on that, yeah. Yeah. So interesting. Uh, yeah, it's it's amazing. All right, so what are you guys doing then over that uh, the whole weekend and, and from the, uh, so, the so mother running mother? What's it called? Mother running trainer group? No, oh, it's a train like a mother club. train like a mother. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. 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 So we uh, just put, throw mother, mother out there. It'll be sort of right. Running <laughs> mom, train, mother. Way, way, yeah. Way. Yeah. So um, <laughs> so we will have a uh, so we'll be at the expo. We'll be selling in limited edition merchandise, which okay. sold like hotcakes last year. Yeah. And we get coming up with a new design this year Ooh, that I just adore. Um, so have a booth there. And then, um, I mean, I'll be kind of tied to the booth. So I don't get to do again. I don't think okay. I'll get to be at the sign, although that would be good. I'd get to get off my legs. Yes. You know, so maybe I, yeah, yeah, maybe I, um, you know, um, insist that I get to do that this sure. year. Um, and is this going to be a, like a target race for you in the sense of like, are you going to train hardcore and try to hit some time or are you just going to go and enjoy the scenery? And I, uh, I've been debating that Molly and I, my running partner and I have been debating that. Um, I okay. think, I think enjoying the scenery is the, is the name of the game. Wow, okay. Yeah. Or so just selfie stick with you then and just like keep <laughs> clicking everywhere. <laughs> right, and right. So, so maybe I'll Facebook live it as I go up. Ooh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> so, um, so, so yeah, so because also because I was sort of thinking like, oh, maybe I want to try to hit not an aggressive time goal, but just a a, sure. a, t- a time goal itself. Mm-hmm. And I thought, no, I really want to enjoy it. I mean, if the weather's lousy, I'll maybe push it a little just to get it done. Sure. But I mean, if it's been like it has the past couple years, I just want to be out there and yeah. soak it all in. As long in. as possible. <laughs> Well, I think yeah, six, I think six hours yeah, is there's the, a fine yeah. line between enjoying and being out there for too long. But I mean, yeah. I mean, when it's sunny, it's it's yeah. like running through a stained glass 
like mm. museum or something because the the, the the leaves and the sunlight and the way it dapples and shines off the oranges and reds and yellows i love nature yeah. and so it's just it's just beautiful and the water and i don't know it it really um in my mind it's almost like um it is like stained glass and mm-hmm. there wasn't any i don't really i don't remember too many specifics it would all just like blend together yeah um, autumnal colors well, my yeah. f- my favorite part of the whole course um, and I can write this down for you so you can go back, <laughs> is coming from going over the Franklin Bridge, coming from, I think I'm getting uh, West River to East River. It's kind of the point where you cross over into St. Paul or a little bit before that. But you come over the bridge, and if you look to your right, it's the river and just all of the, the c- fall colors going uh-huh. down. Like you said, the sun, I think, is still at the right point then. And it's just like every time I've done it, I just get even now I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. It's like this emotional uh, experience. And I think because it comes, it's, it's about 18, 19 right there when you're like, just need something like that. It's just, yeah. you know, it's a, incredible. It just it carries is. you on. And then of course you get over to the big 20 mile wall thing and you're like, mm-hmm. I want more of that over there. <laughs> <laughs> but then you so. get to look at the houses on summit. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and then you yeah. have that to look forward to right. and then the next right. thing and the next thing. So right. Right. And yeah. then, you know, and it's such a spectacular finish line going down oh, to yes. the Capitol it's and the whole thing is just amazing. Yeah, and the cathedral. I mean, cause we also in Portland, we don't have big buildings like that. Right. So there's a part of me that, and, and I grew up in the New York city, New York city area. So like I, I know from big buildings, sure. But still, there's a th- real thrill to be like to see a cathedral. I mean, it's yeah. like so European and like right grand. There, yeah. I mean, we just don't have any grand buildings here no, in Portland. No. Portland's very small in it comparison, is. or short, I guess. Yeah, is, uh, <laughs> right. Is the term? Yeah. <laughs> so, how do people, if they want to get involved or they want to join the team, how do they, how do they sign up? Just go to the website. Go to trainlikeamother.club. That club. Yes, that's the super cool, you know, um, suffix. Uh, so, trainlikeamother.club. And you here. go to you go to uh, training programs, and there's a drop-down menu, okay. and you go to marathons. And I mean, so we have we have traditional I'm gonna, I'm gonna training. Add this to the, okay, to the chat good, here. Okay, very very so good. There, you guys are watching. Just yeah. click on that link I just shared. <laughs> Thank you. And there's um, traditional cool. training, and we also do something that we really feel is unique on on the entire interweb, which is heart rate training. And oh, yes. So we have um, Coach M K Fleming who. Okay. Um, is adored, uh, hashtag coached and loved. (laughs) And uh, so that, you know, really, because we are, we believe in, you know, really being in this running thing for the long haul. And it's not about one race. It's not about one run. It's about being able to do it when you're master's age runner or Mm -hmm. when you're super masters, which for the record, I'm not there yet. And, uh, and so that what's, what's, what does that start? Super masters. I think 60, maybe, Okay. maybe someone could chime in if they know what a super sure. masters is. Um, other than like a funky, fresh, you know, uh, <laughs> hip hop band. I don't know. Right, sure. <laughs> so, so, you know, but you want, you want to stay injury free or mm-hmm. at try as injury free as possible. And you don't want to be sidelined. You want to keep doing it. So heart rate training really lets you do that because yeah. you are, as you know, you know, taking your intensity down because so many people go out and go too hard, go too fast, mm-hmm. do too many hard workouts back to back. And with heart rate training, it really teaches you how to, to be able to literally go the distance. Well, and what I found is that, uh, or, or you might found is you find is that you're doing too many runs. Too many of your runs are too fast. Mm-hmm. Like you should be doing a lot more slower runs. And that's, you know, what yeah. elites do is they're actually on their slow days. They're a lot slower than, mm-hmm. than you might think. Exactly. Exactly. And it seemed because also, because if you're a new runner, which so many mother runners happen to be, maybe they're taking it up after a hiatus, you know, maybe they did in high school sure. and then they do it, you know, again, after they've had their babies or whatever. And so, or you've just taken it up, you know, at uh, for your 40th birthday or something like that. And so you can, <laughs> you can think, Oh, I'm doing this wrong, or right. I'm so much slower than everybody else I see, you know, on my block or in the park or whatever. And and heart rate training gives you the permission and insists really that you go slower. Mm-hmm. And that um, you know, I've talked to people who say it's hard because like, oh, they know they can go faster, right. but they're doing their body good to to keep it that slower yeah. pace. I love what you said about you know training for the long haul, or you know, not thinking about just today, but how do you how do you run for a lifetime? I mean, mm-hmm. that's, I think one of the reasons we all love running is because you can do it into your, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s. Um, there's, I don't know if you're familiar with the, the Twin Cities Charter Club. Oh, no. So it's, um, I don't remember what the number is at now, but it's the the folks who have done all 35 or 36 wow. Twin Cities Marathon. 
um, I'm blanking on the, the ages, but I think the youngest person is in her 60s, and the uh -huh. oldest, Fast Eddie, is uh, Fast much Eddie. older than that. Uh -huh. um, and so I've talked with a number of them, and they've just kind of talked about that as, you know, it's just being consistent over time. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious, transition a little bit, is uh, what does it take, and we talked a little bit, to be a successful runner? And you can define success however you want. And I think specifically, I'm, I'm curious, like a couple of tips, a couple mm. of tricks, a couple oh. of pieces of your wisdom, your advice. Um, like, how do you be a successful runner? What does that mean? How do you define it maybe as a good place to start? I think uh, finding enjoyment in it mm. and finding whatever enjoyment is, sure. whether that means um, reveling in the fact that you're out of your house and no one's tugging at your leg or <laughs> nobody needs a diaper change. <laughs> hopefully not. Uh, right. <laughs> change their own diapers <laughs> right, right now. Right, right. Stop and abort a body. <laughs> and um, or whether it's, oh, I finally get to listen to my own music. I get to listen to a podcast without having to stop mm. it every five minutes because somebody walks into the kitchen, Sure, you know, or because I'm with my best running friend, which is like a happy hour turned on its head. It's mm -hmm. at, you know, 6 a.m. instead of 6 p.m. Right. And because at 6 p.m. you don't get the discounts. You don't too. get the discounts <laughs> on the food. So what's right. the point? Exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. So, or whether it's for me, it's being outdoors. Sure. And even, you know, this morning it was still kind of raining then and um, not a super pretty morning yet. And, but I still love being out there yeah. because it makes me feel alive. And so, so it's not only um, finding what makes you happy, but also recognizing hmm. that it's making you happy. Sure. Because too often times running, it, particularly if you're training for a race, can feel like a chore. It feels like something you have to do mm -hmm. instead of something you get to do. And we mm, really have to do versus get to do. I like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, um, we we'll put on bumper sticker maybe. Oh, for there you, you go. Yeah. Sure, okay. sure. Yeah, a magnet. How little, about that? Yeah, yeah. Window peel. Something. Right. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, so it's you know reminding yourself of that. Mm -hmm. And um, also, how, how do you remind yourself of that? Um, or are you so, so zen-like in oh, your? Oh yeah, totally. You, it's no. just, I don't have to um, well. Oh, oh, I, I love my best running friend with all my heart. I just okay. love Molly to Molly, pieces. Yeah. yeah. So I um, oftentimes on a run will just say out loud, like she'll say something that just cracks the heck out of me or that she has such insight. And I will tell her, I'll just say, Molly, I love you so much. Uh, you know, cool. and it's nice because how often do you tell someone other than your, your partner or your kids right. or your, your immediate family members, how often do you tell somebody that you love them? Yeah. And it's easier because I'm not looking at her. I'm not sitting across a table yes. from her and looking into it's, her eyes. It's disarming to have a deep conversation or connection with someone when you're running this way. Yeah. 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 So, so, you know, and, and there's a certain, f uh, a tiny bit of flippancy when I say it, but I mean it with sure. all sincerity. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, say uh, to me saying things out loud, and mm. I do it in races too. Like if I'm if I'm you know in a rough spot, I figure other people around me probably are f in a rough spot. So I'll sometimes be the sure. the um, freak show who will say out loud <laughs> like you know there's um, I was in Portland Marathon, which has one significant hill um, right around mile 18 sure. going up to the St. John's the Bridge. bridge yeah. And so I, you know, I felt like I was having a tough time and the people mm. around me were kind of struggling a little bit. So I'm like, let's, you know, let's crush this hill. Let's take some names. <laughs> and people look like, what does like, she possibly what? mean? What does yeah. taking names mean? It's right here on my bib. <laughs> Just take it. Yeah. Just take it. And so, so, you know, it's, or, you know, if I see someone like, let's say uh, in a race, let's say doing a 10K and you, you know, I've been following somebody, you know, the chick in the pink tank top and that she's been, you know, like, There's you know, always someone in a tutu <laughs> for me. <laughs> I like that they're ahead of you. Yes. Uh, oh, yes. I've been, I have been beaten by more tutus, <laughs> and I'm fine with that. But. We used to have a uh, a shirt that, gosh, what did it say? I wish somebody would chime in. What did it say? Fear the tutu? Someone needs to write in. Uh, what yes. did our... It was because when we ran Ragnar relays, we always wore a tutu because then we're e able to spot team members, you know, because oh, you're kind of, even right, in the dark, you kind of look like a little lampshade. <clears throat> um, so, um, by the way, so Phoebe just chimed in. Phoebe... Of Van Scoy Geisler. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, please. I know from Phoebe. Okay, so some big races have a Masters champ, and then a Grandmasters for over 50. Okay, and over then 50. Senior Grandmasters is over 60. Oh, so. dang. Okay, well, I'm not going to admit which category That's I fall okay. into I there. Won't, yeah. I won't, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so sorry. thank you, Phoebe. Um, and uh, so. Um, the da, 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 Sorry, oh, really so oh, saying railing. saying things out loud, yes, yes. saying things okay. out loud. So um, so saying things out loud can motivate you during a race, mm -hmm. can get you out of a tough spot during a long training run or a, just a hard training mm -hmm. run, and it can also remind you out loud. You know, say out loud. It's you know nobody can really hear you, or maybe they think you're talking on Bluetooth. Yeah. So maybe you're <laughs> yeah. having a phone conversation sure. and just say out loud, "Oh, it's so beautiful today," yeah. or. Or, oh, I love this song. Like, yeah. Sia rocks, yeah. you know, whatever it is. <laughs> Betty Who, love her. Betty so, Who, yeah. yeah. So, Betty Lou Who. Yeah. <laughs> no. So, so to, you know, just say it out loud. 
and um, because you know it, it's a reminder, mm-hmm. and or write it on your hand or whatever it is. You know, write it on a piece of tape yes. and pop it on your hand. So, um, so that's one thing for so reminding yourself how, that there's enjoyment to it, that you're mm-hmm. not being forced to do this. Because yeah. if you are being forced to do this, if you're having to force yourself every day, find something else to do. Yeah, hop totally. on a bike, go in the pool, go to rowing. Zumba class, start, yeah, rowing. Row, start rowing. You know, yeah. it's such an easy sport to take up. Yeah. Um, you know, do, do strength training, whatever it is. Take take a break until you miss it, and then come back to it. Yes. Um, and you'll probably do your body good by taking a little time off. Um, mm-hmm. So the question is what to do to make sure you're a long time runner. Um, yeah, or just yeah. I mean, yeah, I think you've defined su- you know success as a oh, runner. Oh, success. Sure. And I think okay. that's you know you've hit it hit the nail on the head of like you have to enjoy it. Like if you're mm-hmm. going to succeed at this, you have to enjoy it. I doubt many people who are setting PRs, whatever that is, if that's you know breaking five hours or three hours, are able to do it if they're not enjoying it. Right. Because it's right. just so difficult. Right. So and also. Um, you know, adding new things to, to bring success hmm. and, and enjoyment to it. So if you feel like Ugh, another 5K, well, it's time to step up to a 10K. Sure. Or um, maybe like, oh, if marathon training is just grinding you down, well, then the half marathon is a beautiful race. You can, you know, oh, still yeah. enjoy brunch afterwards. Yeah. So, you know. And run the next day if you want. Right, right, right. Or not blow your whole weekend that you've flown to, you know, I don't know, exactly. Chicago to do or Cape Cod to do. Yeah. You know, Minneapolis. You can, right. You can still enjoy. It's a 10 yeah. miler. It's a 10 yeah. miler. Exactly. So. Exactly. That's why we didn't sell too many 13.1 sweatshirts that weekend. Yeah. Duh. <laughs> there's no, there's no half marathon at the Twin Cities <laughs> yeah. Marathon. I'm not going to make that mistake twice. <laughs> <laughs> Smart. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. And how to, um, I mean, success, what else? Um, I don't know. Share it with your family. Talk mm. it up to your family. Talk it up to your friends. Yeah. Um, let other people share in your enjoyment and your success. Mm-hmm. Um, and be proud of what you're doing because, yeah. you know, I mean, certainly sitting here, I, you know, I know that you're faster than I am, but it doesn't mean well. that, you know, it doesn't doesn't negate that I did a that I did a good job this morning climbing right. the hill, you know, that Molly and I went up or whatever. So right, that absolutely. so that everybody's measure of success is different, mm-hmm. and don't don't measure it against you know some young dude who you know has eleven months old. You know, <laughs> I got eleven year olds. It's life's different. Right, so, life is different. <laughs> right, yeah. right. So and you have a little more testosterone hopefully yeah. than I do. Hopefully, so, yeah, right. hopefully. hopefully for both of us. Hopefully, let's see. Let's <laughs> Otherwise, see. I can grow that beard that <laughs> yeah, I need. <laughs> exactly. Well, I can't grow beard. So maybe that's <laughs> so yeah yeah interesting well i love what you said about that especially the um well so for me i it's kind of been pursuing this boston goal for years and i did it but i qualified but not by a month enough oh uh, oh uh, <laughs> yeah it's just hard you know 30 seconds and we won't go into that whole long story but i've tried two more times missed it and then uh. you know when the twins were born i had basically promised my wife i was going to take a bunch of time off mm-hmm. because because you know, there's two of them. Because there's two of them, and a third and one yep. is older, and apparently, uh-huh. kids need your attention. Oh, I don't. Man. I don't know why. Um, but I was. I realize now that I was really burnt out, and so for me to kind of rekindle that that joy, that that love of it, I just really kind of. I, I never stopped running, but I stopped racing. Mm-hmm. Um, or I would. St- I would still go to races, and it was more just for the fun of that. And mm-hmm. I would just kind of show up and be like, "What are you running?" What are you, you know, what time are you running? And mm-hmm. just kind of see what I could do, mm-hmm. not really caring. And it kind of created this whole new sense of like, this is really fun. And then mm-hmm. it became more about going to brunch with the team <laughs> after the race. <laughs> and like, where are we going to get pancakes this week? <laughs> um, and so it was about a year of that. And I feel like now I'm finally at the point where like, okay, I think I'm ready to do this again. But yeah, if you don't have that sense of like, why am I doing this? Why is this fun? Then it's just, it's pointless. Right. So um, yeah. Cause I mean, I, so I haven't done, I don't race all that often. Okay. And so I ran Boston, um, a year ago, April, and then I, uh, had some speed, um, okay. home from there. And so I tried to set a 10 K PR and, <coughs> or set a time goal for 10 K PR, had a good race up at the twilight, um, series up yes. at, uh, a good Van- friend of mine ran that last Vancouver year. Yeah. Lake. yeah. So, um, you know, in the, Portland area where you can run a race in the summer mm-hmm. and actually expect decent weather. Yes. Uh, crazy <laughs> decent humid. racing weather. Yeah. So, but I haven't done a race since then. Okay. And I don't, you know, not, I mean, I was offered a bib, you know, to, to run Ogden this weekend. I'm like, no, I want to come back yeah. and do the Irvington home tour. So oh, yeah, <laughs> it's my favorite day in Portland of the entire year. And I, I don't mean Irvington. that. <laughs> yeah. I don't mean that sarcastically. It yeah. is my favorite day of the year. So well, um, uh, priorities. Yes. Architect goes, all goes back to yeah, I was just going to say, going back to the architecture yeah. of the Twin Cities. Yeah. There you go. Oh, yeah, there you yeah. Go. So, um, so yeah. I mean, so Twin Cities Marathon might be my first race um, okay. since July of 2016. I okay. don't know. Maybe I'll do a, a tune-up half. I don't know. Maybe some, well, something in there in between, or yeah. yeah. We'll okay. see what comes along, but I'm not, um, I'm not fretting about it. Okay. So, and I, you know, I mean, I 
and and enjoying runs and i know i'm looking forward to training so that's important yeah so and i'm gonna that's, be that's actually really important right. that's a huge point <laughs> like it's really important. If you're dreading the training you're probably not going to have a good right race. right and so i'm excited because it'll be the first time that i'll be in a train like mother club program ah, so okay. molly and i are going to join that program and do the traditional training and um which and uh, there's two levels of it and um one is the finish it and one is i believe the, called the crush it and um, oh, okay. Molly's convinced that she convinced I love that. me. So to finish do the is just like I'm gonna get to the finish line with crush a smile on my face. Crush it is, you know, wanna... uh, be focused more on honing speed. Yes. Okay. And so um, we're not so much about honing speed, but Molly really wants to do it because it includes three 20 milers, and okay. she feels that um, in the past when we followed a training program from my former coach, uh, sh she felt that there weren't enough long runs. Okay. And because I was coming off a really uh, debilitating injury. I fractured mm. my ankle in four places two years ago and okay. have some hardware That's in my leg. Ouch. Uh, yeah, How'd but, you do that? Um, Running? Going down a slide. Um, yeah. Um, was so it that one at Grant Park? No. It's, uh, that, oh. that one's actually probably b bigger. In my mind, the one oh. I went down was huge. It's the one in Spokane, Washington. Oh, okay. It's um. So um, it was wet. I was wearing capris. Um, Ooh, it was all for a photo. And there is photographic um, evidence of it. <laughs> oh, there is. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My Wins. Jack has. Jack has. Oh. I, I've never seen it. Okay. So, um, so anyway, um, uh, so we're going to do three 20 milers. Wow. So, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, hopefully it'll be, it's cold. We'll have a cold summer like we had a cold spring. Yeah. <laughs> Cold winter, cold yeah, winter. right. Yeah. right. Wow. Winter is coming. It's, yeah, it's still it's like Game of Thrones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Watch out for the White Walkers. And yeah, that's fun. Well, Sarah, thank you so much. I I feel like I could sit here and talk to you forever. I could too. Should um, we see if there's a couple? But um, this is yeah. So I'm I'm looking through the comments here. Uh, someone asked, and I it's already scrolled through about uh, the ambassador program, or if there was one, or yeah. Or so we are talking. We are talking about starting an ambassador program because. We, um, so we uh, call um, people in the Another Mother Runner tribe, uh, oftentimes they call themselves or we call them BAMers, which stands for Badass, Badass Mother Runner. Yeah, that's very good. Cool. Very good. And so, so you know, very avid BAMers, one might okay. say. We might um, tap maybe, I don't know, 12 to 15 of them around the country and probably Canada okay. to kind of proselytize, if you will, sure. spread the word of yeah. another mother runner yeah. <laughs> and um, possibly also um, host gatherings. And um, so we're still sort of formulating that and cool. uh, seeing where that goes. Um, yeah. So we don't, we don't, nothing's in the works. There's some preliminary um, research okay. into it. Yeah. Some so, I mean, you know, so many running brands do have ambassadors, you know, like they there's do, noon yeah. ambassadors and, you know, the Wazelle, like there's, yeah, there's Wale, a lot of, and, you know, those sort of things. A lot of am ambassador programs out there, which is, which is a great way to get, yeah, get the brand so out there and get, you know, people are, are passionate about it, which, and you know, just other, other comments. Um, uh, everyone loves you. Everyone oh. loves <laughs> Uh, <laughs> growing so much. Uh, thanks. Uh, where's oh, where's nice. the other one go? Um, so, so excited for you to come to TCM. Another mother runner. This is from Heather Jurgensen, I believe. Uh -huh, yeah. Another mother runner has inspired me from the very beginning of my run journey. Love these ladies and the friends that I've made. Oh, nice. Yeah, that is. Um, it's amazing t to me the friendships lot, that, that. that are formed because I mean I was talking before about how we're. Um, and tell me if you want to cut this short, because I could I could just keep talking. Hey, so let's, let's so, go. So that that <laughs> so much of what we do and, and so much of our lives these days in general, not outside of sure. the another mother our community, are, are it's lived online. And so to be able to make connections in person. Yes. And so um, we had uh, women who went to our second annual retreat last year in Spokane. Um, they just got together in Utah to do oh. a Ragnar trail race over the weekend. Okay. That was another question about Ragnar in here. Yeah. Um, Keep, keep so, going. so so that it was just so thrilling to me I, and i didn't know ahead of time i um i am negligent in paying enough attention <laughs> to sometimes all the different facebook pages we have and so when i saw those pictures i was hmm. so thrilled that you know these people from you know just all over the country had got had convened in utah and yeah. to feel that dimity and i played some little tiny part in that sure feels really fulfilling and um impactful yeah um that's awesome yeah and so and women from our ragnar team or our first retreat have met up at races in austin or you know mm. they'll go visit each other and so it just is so nice to see real true friendships in person form right. um, yeah it's yeah. it's funny that there's so many people that i've you know through minneapolis running you know who i've gotten to know as you know a little square right and right. then you meet in person for the first time right. and you're like oh that's look, look you have a body yeah that's that's who you are yeah yeah um so yeah well i just, I just think it's really cool what you guys are doing oh, and it's, it's so fun to see um just just the reach and how big it is and how empowering it is to 
not just women to uh-huh. all kinds of people, but you know, especially especially women and, and moms who, you know, maybe sometime have a, a more difficult time kind of getting that support that, that they might need. So yeah, um, yeah. can I tell very cool? Can yes, I tell one fine story that um, so there was this um, husband Chris who wanted to buy for his wife, Nicole, uh, ent- um, registration to our retreat, which yeah. is at the end of September in Spokane again. And so the weekend before Twin Cities, okay. that's going to be super fun to transition <laughs> yeah. from being in the retreat yeah, for four days luck, and then uh, go, getting out there. At least I'll be tapering. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, you don't have yeah, to do a long yeah. run. So, uh, so we are... Um, I'm find the retreat link. Yeah, so anotherMotherRunner.com slash retreat. Got Thank it. you yes. so much, Nathan. You're welcome. So, so Chris bought for his wife... Uh, um, a registration to the retreat and there's very few spots left so um, click on that link right yeah, now right, right and so it was a surprise that he gave to her on Mother's Day and Nicole emailed me mm. on Monday because uh, I need to let her into the Facebook page but she said that uh, their youngest child who's 18 he said you know who is this serendipity are they like family friends that I've never met <laughs> or are they like celebrities they've been talking about <laughs> you so much probably <laughs> and yeah so, <laughs> And it's so it's just so so funny well, that that's of both. So yeah. <laughs> right. Thank you. So so it's just so funny. And I was just like, nope, they're just two moms, you know, <laughs> doing their thing in front of the computer. Yeah, it's so <laughs> it's so great how how you know sometimes the things that we do at you know midnight, you know, right. when our you know. I should be in bed, whatever, then turns into something that people really value and find, you know, oh, I know. get a lot out of it. So it's, it's fun to I know. sort of see that in person when yeah. you can. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so that, that, that story totally made my day That's yesterday. Awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, well, Sarah, thank you so much uh, thank you, again. Nathan. Thank you for coming here to migration and, um, we'll have to find time to run together oh, or, yeah, you'll or have something. Slow down a little bit. Maybe. Uh, well, you know, you know, you got, but maybe if you run with me, you can knock those enough time off to qualify. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Exactly. Exactly. Um, but yeah, it's, it's so great. And it's, uh, it was funny how, how close we live to each other in oh, the you know, grand scheme of the city. Exactly. Um, yeah. So a, a Minneapolis man in Portland. So exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Who knew? So it's, I love Portland, love Minneapolis, the twin cities. Um, although in January, it's pretty hard to, well, you know what, you know, well, this year was what swayed me was, uh, I mean, I honestly, after that first visit, I not only yeah. was all set to sign up for the marathon, but I'm like, that's it. We're going to move, right, you know, like I'm, that, yeah. you know, I'm self-employed. My husband's self-employed. Yeah. We could do this. And then literally, uh, I think it was Joe was driving me to the airport and she said, oh, you know, it's so funny. You know, we call the mosquito, the unofficial state board. And I'm like, ah. I'm out totally out unofficial <laughs> i mean you've got the loon but then the mosquito is really the boss i mean come on let's be honest yeah, yeah so no that's not for me screen yeah. porch is not my thing well it's, it's funny because when you know we've been out here now three this is our fourth year um and i still i still work for a small consulting for my real job mm-hmm. um so i'm back and forth not as much since the twins were born but in the summertime it's amazing here you don't have to close your windows it's not yep. you know bugs and mosquitoes aren't a big deal but there it's like shh you know, oh, spray yeah. yourself with oh yeah no you know, i mean a lot of a lot of houses brutal. here don't have screens on the windows right right you know i mean yeah you just so don't you just don't need it really right right so so yeah, yeah. so um so yes and and i um suffer from raynaud so my hands go oh, white okay so and like even the cold s- yeah so thing? even yeah. this morning i had to shake when i got out of the car i had to shake my hand down uh. because my, my my middle finger was going white oh so <laughs> it was it was looked like a candle so i didn't oh, think funny. that was a good look so um yeah probably not uh, yeah. so so you know if it if it does that when it's you know low 50s in portland forget about minnesota winters yeah yeah, yeah so I but but october 1st i'm looking for some yes. good weather i'm looking well, for dry weather mm-hmm. yeah can we work that out i will um let me see i know a few of the weather yeah. people there. let <laughs> right, me just see right. if they can yeah yeah they can kind of spin <laughs> whatever it is however you do that so yeah yeah, yeah well yeah. thanks so yeah. much again well, appreciate, thank you. appreciate yeah. meeting you this was um, lovely thank you yes this is wonderful so and thank you everyone for watching this um the links are in there if you would like to join another mother runner uh-huh. uh Training, yeah. train like a mother, <laughs> yeah. right? Yep. So that's like it. That's club. the only thing that has uh, that actually you have to join. Other than that, right. you know, Everything, you can like yep. our Facebook page, another mother runner. I'm gonna just spew some social yes. media. Yes, spew away. Spew. So um, on Instagram, we are at the mother runner. At the mother runner. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, on uh, Twitter, it's at the mother runner. If you okay. feel like following me, I'm at SBS on the run. SBS on the run. At SBS Got on it. the run or at Dimity on the run. Okay. Uh, um, uh, again, she's my. Uh, even taller than me, co-founder. Co-founder, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, 
Yeah, and so and we're another mother runner on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So uh, it just it, you know it's support, it's encouragement, it's a uh, you know gentle kick out the door. It's awesome, and you guys have a huge following on Facebook. Oh yeah, thanks. It's oh so and fun. and it's most so fun. perhaps most importantly, um, listen to the Another Mother Runner podcast. Yes, you which know. I said this at the beginning, but if you're just joining us, it's it's awesome. There's a lot of great tips for non mothers in there yeah, too. So yeah, you said strength training, and yeah, we strength had strength training uh, and a nutrition person on there recently. I, th we, I think. Well, or? we have Melissa Clark from the New York Times, who okay. was our most recent guest talking about making dinner which is uh, yes, you know a big concern for mothers oh yeah. um and, and fathers, and fathers. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. yep and uh I'm the, and i'm the dinner guy yeah. in our house so oh nice oh nathan what yeah. a renaissance man <laughs> I, you know it's 2017 <laughs> so, and uh and so oh yeah we're having peter sagel from wait wait don't tell me oh, he's yeah. our father's day guest because we oh, like cool. to represent with the father That's on father's awesome. day okay. Yeah, and um, oh yeah, oh, and we're having Virginia from um, Rofi Ackman. Yes, from, oh, she's from, great. So she's our guest this week. Okay. She's the we, director of Twin Cities in Motion. Yes, yeah, yep. so she's our guest this week, along with Fabulous. Sarah Ratzliff, who's taken over some of the Zuma races. Oh, okay. So it's about kind of an inside look at being a race director, sure. and um, because so there's just so many details, yeah. I can't even. And it's a thankless job. No one, they only compl they only talk to you if something's wrong usually. Right, right. Which with Twin Cities in Motion, there's rarely there's anything nothing wrong. wrong. Yeah, never. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so if it rains this year, they'll all complain because it's her fault. I mean, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So Virginia, if you're watching this, you got to figure that out. <laughs> right. Get on about it. Four or five months to do that. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. So cool. So good deal. Well, thank you so yes, much. Yes. Thank a blast. you. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, now I need to get a walk. Okay. Yeah. Get up. Is, walk around. So I'll. So do, 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 yeah. You can kind of entertain do, do, do. everybody Isn't for the next uh, totally thirty cute? seconds here. My shirt's totally cute from MotherRunnerStore.com. 